Welcome to our lecture online. Four, four years after the Russians started sending spacecraft to Mars, at least attempted to send spacecraft to Mars, the United States got into the game and started sending two of their own. They're called Mariner 3 and Mariner 4. The Russians in the same window, the third window when travel to Mars started, also sent another spacecraft called Zond. Now, all three of them had missions for flyby Mars, and notice that Mariner 3 didn't make it. Mariner 3, uh, they had a problem with the launch cycle. The payload wasn't able to separate from the boosters and things went wrong after that. And they came tumbling back down and tumbled back into the Atlantic. But Mariner 4 made it. It actually got into orbit. It was able to boost out of orbit towards Mars and it did a successful flyby Mars. The first flyby ever by any spacecraft which happened on the 15th of July, 1965 and it was able to take pictures. Now the closest approach was just shy of 10,000 kilometers, which is a little bit over 6,000 miles. So it got quite close to the surface, but the quality of the pictures just wasn't there. Now here's two pictures. The one on the right was made by Mariner 4. The one on the left was made later by the Viking uh, spacecraft that went to Mars. And you can see there's a huge difference in the, in the quality of the pictures, the resolution of the pictures, but at least we began to see some things, some details on there. You can actually make out the craters, make out some of the volcanoes on the surface of Mars. So it was a huge success. Now, we didn't have the capability to send pictures as they were being made. So the pictures were actually recorded kind of like a television camera that was recording pictures. They were then stored on magnetic tape and then slowly downloaded to be sent very slowly back to Earth. They had two antennas. They had a one high gain and a low gain antenna. And so over time, they were able to send those pictures back to the Earth. And it was absolutely amazing. The first time that we'd ever seen the surface of Mars up close. What was noticed at the time was that they saw lots of craters, that the surface of Mars looked very much like the surface of the Moon, at least from that perspective. They missed some of the major landmarks that we're aware of today, so they weren't aware yet that Valmarineras existed, that the huge plate volcanoes were there. They just missed those completely, but they did get a good look at some of the major features of Mars, some of the other major features, and a lot of the big craters on Mars. So they knew that it was a cratered, seemingly lifeless surface quite different from what they were potentially hoping because remember it was less than 100 years before then that people thought there actually might have been civilizations on the planet Mars but there didn't seem to be any evidence of that at least with those low resolution pictures but it was a huge victory to be able to fly by another planet that was the first time that was ever done back in July of 1965. The spacecraft was relatively small it was just over 500 pounds 260 kilograms and uh, the mission was then finally terminated a couple of years later in 1967. So it was successful that it continued to communicate with the ground, with the Earth, and that we're able to take measurements. And we'll, in a later video, we'll show you some of the measurements that they had on board of the spacecraft. The Russians also sent another spacecraft that was number six for them. It's called the Zon 2. It was sent on the, from the same booster, the Molnia. Notice that the United States used the Atlas rockets to boost these into space and then to continue on to Mars. So the Atlas rockets are, have been used for a very long time and have been fairly robust uh, spacecraft to send, to send satellites into space, into orbit. Now, the Zon 2 was also supposed to do a flyby. It was sent November 30, 1964. That's when the launch date was. It did manage to get into orbit. It did manage to boost itself towards Mars. But just, just like before, the communication was lost and we were not able to know if they reached Mars or not. Potentially, if they were on track to get there, they must have gotten close, but they weren't able to communicate, so no pictures, no, no, sens no sensors were active or being able to be um, sent. The, the data from the sensors was not be able to be sent back to Earth, so we don't know how far it got or what happened to it. Again, very much, very likely that it flew by the planet. We just don't have any, any information from it. So that is the early history. So it took, let's see, five, six, seven tries. On the seventh try, by the combined efforts of Russia and the United States, on the seventh try, one spacecraft was successfully making it all the way to Mars, being able to take pictures of Mars and send that information back to the Earth. So it wasn't easy, 
a lot of errors, a lot of mistakes, a lot of things that went wrong because it's a very complicated business sending spacecraft into space. It's a very harsh environment, a lot of stresses, a lot of heat and power used in getting those vehicles up into space and so so many things can go wrong and all that experience slowly was gained so that in later missions they were able to be much more successful so we'll show you some more of the later missions as well but there it goes 1965 the first flyby another planet besides earth so quite amazing and we'll um, and notice 1965 Think about, think about the technology had at the time to do so. So it was quite a feat with the relatively primitive technology it had to make it all the way to Mars to send pictures back to the Earth.